I've been doing a lot. Can't think of anything in particular. Um, there's my NVIDIA collection, by the way, NVIDIA. Send me a check, okay? I dug out all my boxes. <laughs> no, you're not mentioning any AMD stuff, so you don't need to have that in frame. Yeah. <laughs> AMD. Call And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. How's everybody doing? Uh, Jordan? Pedro? Is everybody happy? Everybody having fun? Doing well? I'm Vince no. Stone. If you don't know, the sword, the man, that's Jordan Sveng, and the guy with the hot dog Ow. figurine. Um, Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's it's, Pedro it, it's Nori's uh, statue. It, it's very pretty. Nori's statue. It's not beefy miracle. <laughs> it is made <laughs> entirely of nightmares. <laughs> Speaking of nightmares, <laughs> you at home, Shadow Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Uh, before we get going, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs, which I'm guilty as my cohorts, my partners in crimes are of not writing or all down in the notes. Uh, it's because nothing happens in my life. <laughs> 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 it's Canada, man. You'd be like, it's cold, brr. Yeah, I, I, I continue to exist. Existence is suffering. What more do you want from me? <laughs> Pedro, have you been up to anything other than just being sick? You've been sick since like Tuesday, right? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I started to feel it on Wednesday, um, right around the time that we we're doing the show. And uh, it got worse on Thursday, and then it got even worse on Friday. And today is a little bit better but yeah i did get uh one thing i got um an aoc agon 24 inch oh, 2560 yeah. uh, 1440 monitor it's the one right here and it comes with this little usb thingy for the uh for the it's a remote it yeah yeah it is <laughs> it's a remote and it detaches that takes all the i, I would love it if it was just like permanently built into the back of it it's like you have to live with me or oh yeah it just off. flops around while you're trying to move it to <laughs> Oh, no, no, you can unplug it. It's just a mini B connector, so yeah. <laughs> Boo! Uh, I've been doing a lot. Can't think of anything in particular. Um, there's my NVIDIA collection, by the way, NVIDIA. Send me a check, okay? I dug out all my boxes. <laughs> no, you're not mentioning any AMD stuff, so you don't need to have that in frame. Yeah. <laughs> AMD, call me. <laughs> Daddy needs that HDMI encoder. No, man. Uh... <laughs> I think we talked about it in the pre pre super shows. Genuinely, the biggest surprise came uh, today when I was at the grocery because I, I have a fascination with uh, stuff I call like prison size, uh, usually <laughs> condiments, you know, those big, massive ones. And I didn't know they made prison size tuna. And it was a comically perfect giant star kiss tuna can. I almost bought it for my um, collection, but I decided against <laughs> it for a week. We're just delaying the inevitable. I'll probably have that as a prop next week. Like, hmm, here's my <laughs> can of man, tuna. We're, 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 we're talking about Fallout games, man. If there's ever like a Fallout in that takes place in Georgia, like once you find Ven's house, that's his treasure trove of like, oh man, there's a bunch of canned food in here that has totally gone bad. And if you eat it, you will die. <laughs> this, <But. laughs> this is true. Unfortunately, we've never been able to find canned horse. I mean, it's because we need to get a canner for our horse, which is basically dead. It's the same sort of spoiled meat, anyways. It's the steam. Let's not day of the week. Hey, let me out of this can. That's what that means. <laughs> Maybe. Remote play, it's live. Uh, if you pay attention to what we do and streaming wise, it's like Tuesday, Pedro, girlfriend, what's up? Like, let, let's play around and watch yeah. it. Watch it kind of work and be like, haha, we'll have a fun time. It'll be glitchy. It didn't work, kids. Not even a little bit. It's just like, you know what? Dying a fire. So we tried everything that we possibly could and ended up playing Jackbox. This is our report. Now, maybe. You don't know what Remote Play Together is. It allows you to play multiplayer games that previously were only available for local co-op uh, or just regular local multiplayer online with your friends, allegedly, which uh, it it didn't work. Jo uh, not Jordan. Uh, Pedro, you even tried it because check this out. One of my first theories was after, like, how do I put this box in DMZ mode? Uh, after yeah. I got done with that thought, <laughs> was it maybe like you do, you're troubleshooting? This is something three of us, I'm sure you at home, he's like, this is part of my life, man, troubleshooting. So you run this back. 
thought possibly like for some bizarre moon reason it could have been region locked and i was like that'd be mm -hmm. dumb but watch that be the case but you tried it with someone else i did and i uh, got co-worker dave found him on steam he was online it's like do you got like five minutes yeah okay i'm gonna send you an invite i'm and i need you to tell me exactly what happens and he got exactly the same behavior we did while we were trying it uh, on stream you see the window show up with the little loading uh, circle on the bottom right, and then it, just a teeny tiny little Steam box saying, yeah, couldn't connect to remote computer. So, yeah, it, mm. it, it didn't work from here to, like, I don't know, like 20 miles down the road. That's where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a little it's a little sad, but hopefully hopefully in the coming weeks we're gonna see a lot more updates to get those fixed. Cause this is like this is a hot feature. If they can get this down, holy shit, yeah. man, dude, that'll that, like that'll that'll be game over for like a lot of um, a lot of other stores who can't offer that functionality. Be like, hey, mm -hmm. this game that supports couch multiplayer, you can just play it online with your friends. That's this uh, okay, one hundred percent with that, and we were glad to see that you know it, it came shipped with Linux support out of the box, especially if it starts working. And there are mm -hmm. services like Parsec that provide this functionality. That seems like yeah, you just go ahead and shut down now because once this is working, <laughs> no one's going to bother with that service. One thing I want to play with is like how is it going to handle games that already have online multiplayer? Like let's say. We buy a copy of Trine 4. <laughs> I mean, it will just be like, if it's working, the way that they described it would be like we're sitting next to you and playing directly with controllers connected to your box. Because I'm thinking about coming, as, coming at it as a game developer and be like... You need to disable that because that's <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they're gonna have a thing that allows developers to turn that off on the back end, like on a per game basis. But I don't know, like, there's precedent already for Steam saying, listen, we don't care how you play as long as you're using our service, right? That's why they added the button yep. for uh, for Proton, right? You can mm -hmm. even even for native games, you can play the Proton version because they're like, sure, whatever, do it, do what you want as long as you're giving us money to buy the game and you're using our service, we'll let you do what you want. So, yep. Fair enough. Uh, client beta. New updates. Yeah, there's brand new client beta. And hey, the library is starting to stabilize and not become a crashy, massively CPU consuming mess. Uh, they added a UI for uploading screenshots. You can add custom headers and networks. They added the remote play stuff and the, um, and, uh, that we, that we just talked about and uh, apparently they're doing um, better conversions with steam input so uh, like the uh, AX buttons uh, for the PlayStation 4 Xbox controller will get um, I, 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 I don't I don't really know what this means to be perfectly honest um, <laughs> I'll tell you what it means Brad uh, for the first time because I went into the Vita to mm -hmm. play with Pedro like because I, I just noped out of it is too crashy and if it's staying up on me, it's starting to get usable. Like you said, you know, I have not spite note back to the stable client since uh, jumping in it Tuesday. I, I noticed that when I was filling out the notes for this week. And I was like, no, I'm still using it. It hasn't like froze on me in some weird way. I'm like, I'm out. Peace out. A uh, couple of things, though, with this, because you can now add like custom header and logo artwork for people who are into that. It's not really my jam to your library and like set up the logos when doing like game details and stuff. Reddit's a huge fan of that, man. They're like, oh, oh yeah, look, I made custom uh, animated Steam covers. Ones. Yeah. That subreddit, yeah. it's dedicated to that. <laughs> I would like a... Just, this is one thing I don't like about it. It's like, just, I'm sure... I think it's like a minimum interface mode. It's like, don't... I, I don't... No blinky, no wishy. I did notice that uh, they updated Chromium. It's triggering my GNOME key ring now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, by that, I mean, if you just open it right where the computer starts, it won't trigger it because GNOME key ring's useless. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I get I get what the Steam input update is now. After 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 digesting it a little bit. So you you know how the Steam controller has like the paddles that are that are usually bound to A and X. Um, mm -hmm. The PlayStation Four um, like the default cursor behavior um, depend and the the button press behavior depends on whatever is um, set in the op for the option share bindings. So it's just a way to make uh, configs a little more consistent if you're hot plugging in between uh, in between like PlayStation Four and Steam controllers. Which I guess okay. is handy. They're, yeah. they're addressing problems there. But and they also fixed uh, 
they fixed a bunch of stuff with the remote play, but none of the issues that they described there uh, seem to address the issue that we were running into. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe next week. It's maybe next week. Getting better. So uh, we've all left a Steam review or two. Actually, we do one every yes. week. We just don't put it on. Well, sometimes if we like it, we put it in our curator page, which you should go yes. to somehow. I don't know. <laughs> um, there's a new thing though. Steam's kind of like reminding you, like, hey, you reviewed something yes. a minute ago, right? Yeah, and uh, one uh, this one comes from uh, PC Games N, and uh, they picked up on a story that someone uh, was playing Destiny 2, and they already had a review uh, on the game on Steam. And after they were done, it's like, you've played 93 more hours since you've left this review. Would you like to update your review? Uh, and yeah, it's basically, I noticed something like that. It wasn't exactly that exact line but uh yesterday after i put like two hours into the blasphemous uh, Linux beta it asked me if i wanted to leave a review for the games like D would you recommend this game to your friends yes or no and then i hit yes and it gave me like the full thing to like write down a review and all the options that they give you it's like oh you can do that directly from the library page now <laughs> mm. nice <laughs> yeah but will you because my first thought my first thought when I saw that is the go-to is like 1,000 hours of playtime on record followed by the review being, it's okay. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, be, being able to edit your reviews after the fact honestly doesn't seem like too bad an idea because, you know, we, we live in the age of early access. We live in the age where the game that gets released is not necessarily the game that you're playing a year from now. And mm -hmm. so things change. Sometimes uh, sometimes they add features. Sometimes they fix things that were broken. Sometimes they break things. So ongoing feedback is valuable and allowing you to like change your change your opinion and not lock you. Like the, the, we, we get a lot of feedback about that for the chair position, right? We're like, oh, like Octo, Octodad was a, was a really good example. Hmm. Cause like the week, the week after we released our review for that, they fixed a bunch of the problems we had, but our review still yep. stands. It's not like, um, and we're, I mean, we're, we're, we're lazy fucks. So we're not going to go back and re-record an entirely new review Revisionist on history. Right, but at, the, at 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 the at the same time, like if if you're using a system that's meant to influence your purchasing, yeah, you should be able to, you know, up to update your opinion based on new things that have happened, right? No, I see. Here's the problem with that, and that's it's a very simple thing to look at: time travel. Okay, I I need accurate reviews. Like if I want to see what this game's going to be like when I jump back to that time, it needs to be right. But couldn't you just check the reviews from that time? If you have well, a time that machine. exact time, maybe I want to go for a little bit, and but the review's <laughs> already been changed. I'm like, man, this isn't accurate. But that's so the thing. These are Steam so, reviews. So they're, they're not like, you know, the typical media produced professional reviews. Professional so, reviews. Yes. <laughs> Emphasis on the uh, implied air quotes there. Uh, yeah, it, it, these are Steam reviews. It's basically what people who are playing the game, regular people, what they think about it. And maybe, yeah, maybe you get to a point in the game where your opinion changes and you start to like it or you start to really hate it. And I, th I honestly think this is a good idea. <laughs> Indeed. Plus, it like makes reviews more valuable, and hopefully, will help yep. curtail review bombs. Because some, because yeah. again, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when the outrage machine spools down, developers will make a change, and then everyone's happy. Rarely, but it it's been known to happen. Right. There's nothing better a nice than a nice warm mug of Dr. Pepper. Um, so Diet Dr. Pepper. Th this is from Electronic Arts uh, at EA on Twitter, and they just. Post this image of a mug with steam coming out of it. <laughs> and Which, then, of course, the internet goes crazy. Well, this is before they po made that post. This is from four days ago. Uh, user one uh, not 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 dash seven. So he's like, hey, man, remember the first look at the new Steam library, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, was in the library? It was very interesting. Now more evidence appears in recent days. A test app has been updated with Origin integration similar to Uplay games. And someone played the Saboteur, a game that wasn't even on the sale, Dragon's Age 2. It looks like EA is coming back probably for old titles. 
And it's awesome. Now, only we have Proton now, and a lot of EA titles work, you know, even though they go, you have to install Origin. It's a roundabout. I think mm -hmm. um, Assassin's Creed 3, uh, that one works. But the only reason I threw this in is because I got a free copy of the latest Odyssey. Is that the latest? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah. Google gave me a free copy of that for beta testing Stadia, and it's on Origin, which it means it's useless. It's you play though, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how to play it, man. U U U Ubisoft means ooh. Yeah, it's um, Ubisoft or whatever, man. But games that you have on Origin, I know I have games on Origin. Hmm. I I don't think I do, but oh, they're, they're I know so what it is. Never mind. Wrong game. Uh, that one that like eight shit Apex or whatever the shooting game. Oh, Ape Apex Legends. Oh, Apex. Yeah. <laughs> it it came yeah. with the twenty uh... sixty. NVIDIA 2060, which is a great budget card that I highly recommend for people looking for a solution. Because I made some money, NVIDIA. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, co co cover that shit up. They're not paying us. Get that shit out of here. Right, buy, buy one of buy, these, buy. man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I, I, so there, there's some interesting discussion in the Reddit thread there too. Uh, links are in the show notes, of course. Um, that there, uh, that EA is looking um, be, be, because, because like uh, microtransaction based monetization is getting a lot of attention from governments these days because they're trying to sell gambling to the chillins. So mm -hmm. perhaps perhaps EA is looking for other ways to enable people to spend money on their games after they pay sixty dollars for them. I mean, or, but like, you know, like you just have a whole new store for those people who don't like Origin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't think they're gonna do away with Origin because that that works in with their vendor lock in. To but, a yeah. point, but you're looking at like the profit motive. Uh, it is you know the initial play. I think everyone has is like, well, we can cut out the steamy middle human by just doing direct, doing your own store. But you know, as your fiduciary duty to your shareholders, continue making more and more money each and every year. At some point, you gotta stop and think, but. We can do that, at, but we can also make more money by going back to Steam and selling there too. It's yeah. so you you take you take the new Coke <laughs> approach. Regar regardless, all this means for us is new Proton fodder because goddamn it, EA is never going to release a native Linux game. So this oh, is no 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 true. <laughs> at most, uh, they'll put a couple of URLs in the um, Ubuntu app yeah. store thingy. <laughs> Indeed, it's Legos for horrible people. Game updates. Yeah. Uh, so Besiege has an update. Uh, they've added some building guides. Now, so p part of that is there's like a little tutorial that teaches you how to build the various machines of death. I don't know. For me, part of the fun of Besiege is iterating through your own designs and organically learning what works and what doesn't work. Sort of I like a Kerbal Space Program type with thing. You on that, but also I think that some people go into this as like you know Lego for world people, making shit of such complexity that they kind of need a. <laughs> Ab 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 absolutely guy. like yeah I, I i can totally see this feature being a valuable addition plus it actually teaches you how to like if you want to build a plane this is what you're going to need to do mm. which i think a lot a lot of people are like oh man you can make like flying shit in this game oh, yeah. uh but you need to sort of understand how the game physics work a little bit so having some instruction there is a good thing and yeah like like you said if you're if you're a project focused person like if you're going in here saying like i have a vision that i want to execute then yeah having having something to dump that skill set on you in the quickest possible way is ideal but again i'm i'm an idiot who likes to play with legos so <laughs> let me have my fun damn it get out of early access seriously <laughs> what is this? you added you're, multiplayer you're already that's that's what you needed yeah they have like three world uh they had like three world updates by now so it's, yeah you probably have enough content to call it 1.0 I'm, I'm just saying plus, plus the workshop take a risk <laughs> yeah. live a little like come out um yeah and only really say that they keep adding but i mean they're at the point like distance was you're like you're just tweaking at it now you're, you're not there's yeah. nothing fundamentally about the game that you, you continue doing this give it a 1.0 uh multiplayer is mm -hmm. fun but murder cube honestly i think multiplayer would benefit uh if they had a asymmetrical mode like kind of like <laughs> chess over email to where we could just pre-build our bots then we could meet up live and stream that and hit go ba on ba it. battle bot style yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah man, pretty much that, you know what that would actually be really fucking fun um uh, left for dead left for bread something we played through the entirety of on hard mode uh is something we're not going to talk about because this is about dying line yeah 
<laughs> so uh, the fine, fine folks at um, I can't remember that their one, name, that but one uh, yeah, they made yeah they, they made uh, Dead Island as well, and they put out uh, Dying Light a while back. Tech and lands. now they have Techlands. Yes, thank you. Uh, now they have an update, and with this one, they're doing a bit of a crossover with uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Or, as we call it around here, Left 4 Bread 2. Uh, and, yeah, basically what this is, is it gives you a lot more ammunition, and it gives you a lot more weapons, and it introduces the frying pan, the guitar, and the golf, golf club? club? Yes, golf club. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Class- classic Left 4 Bread melee weapons. Yeah, as uh, the, like known uh, melee weapons from Left 4 Dead 2. You already had katanas and other kinds of bladed weapons in Dying Light, Cricket so bats. this makes sense. Uh, but yeah, it, it is... The, there's also a bunch more zombies and a bunch more stuff, and it's a bit of an event. I don't know if it's going to be, like, time-limited, but it would be interesting if they'd leave, like, a toggle. It's like, no, I want to play this in Left 4 Dead mode, and... Just have well, a bunch of ammunition and a bunch of weapons and a bunch of zombies to shoot. <laughs> and there, there, there was a bit of a kerfuffle about this too because they, they, they did a bit of a vague tweet earlier where they're like, "We're, we're, we're left for something or other." I, I forget what mm-hmm. it was, but um, yeah. So every, everyone was spooling up the speculation drivers like, "Oh my god, is there going to be a crossover between Dead Island or uh, Dying Light and Left for Dead?" I'm like, "No, man, it's going to be Bridge Constructor Left for Dead Edition." I'm definitely going to get. I got to give one a little bit. I'm like, if your tease is like what they tweeted to spool up that speculation drive, you better deliver deliver something a little better. Yeah, than th- this back. seems a little underwhelming. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I'm I'm disappointed, but this is kind of what I expected anyways. So <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. All right, man. Uh, oil paintings and ships. Abandoned ship. We've been talking about this for a little bit, uh, but it is out. It's You've out had a little out. bit of a crush on it. I have, because <laughs> it looks really good, and it has some interesting game design stuff, and I'm a big nerd for it. But, uh, and I was going to say, I, I put in the notes at the beginning of the week, it's like, man, I'm gonna, I'm just going to straight up buy this, and I might do a stream of it on Thursday. Turns out, I got the... These, these guys uh, put the kibosh on both parts of my plan, <laughs> because they sent us a copy over Curator Connect, and also they don't have a working Linux depot yet, so... Right? Nope. <laughs> Hard mode, So, man. like, c- come on, guys. I want to like your game. Let Give, give me the ability to do this to support you in some way please but they got the um, this is the 1.0 release i mean it uh yeah. it's 10 off which is regularly 24.99 and so i backtrack and i was like well, when did you announce this again and yeah the game's been on sale for four days with a linux version with an empty depot yeah <laughs> dude <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I actually sent them an email. That, that's why they sent us the keys uh, on Curator Connect. It's like, oh, cool. Thanks for that. Uh, and then I, much like Jordan, redeemed the key, went to download. It's like, oh, that was a zero byte download. Right. Here's what you need to do about setting the release flag on your Linux depot for that particular LGC key you cares. sent us. Yeah, right. This is not our first <laughs> rodeo on this. <laughs> Uh, and I got silence back, so I guess I mean it was Friday, so it's probably yeah, that, that, left for the weekend. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, kind of hard, but, but that doesn't excuse like the other three days. I, I thought like, yeah. oh, this must have just came out. I, you know, I, I got the notification in like our Steam Curator thing, and I was like, oh, look, another game. What is it? like? Oh, it's that game Jordan was talking about. Oh, let's redeem it. Take a look at it. And I was like, oh, that must have just came out. It will clearly be populated by Bill in later this afternoon. And it's still not today, which, yeah, four days. No. <laughs> might, might want to sort that. Might want to sort that. Uh, Go, going from the sea of water to the sea of stars. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> underwater in the ocean, no one can hear you scream. And so let's uh, No, no, it just sounds like... Oh, man. <laughs> All space is out of early access, man. It's the 100 pilot battles with lasers, but no sharks, but plasma and missiles. And you fly around, pew, pew, pew. It looks good. It's four ninety nine. I've been playing around with the early access. I just pop in, fly around, blow some shit up, run into things. Uh, it's always just been no one but me playing. Which is fine. I mean, it looked fine. It's multiplayer, online multiplayer. It's very simple. Uh, not much to it. I mean, it flies like you would expect it. You know, uh, you do your barrel rolls with the Q&E and standard WASD and doesn't take much to run. But they're like, yo, man, 
the game's ready. We threw some bots in it, and it's no longer free. It's four ninety nine, which I don't have a problem with. Not an issue whatsoever. However, I don't know if you thought your clever plan all the way through, man, because nobody was playing it when it was free. No, and I actually had a look at the Steam charts. It's like, oh yeah, the, the hundred player battle. That sounds great. Let's have a look to see how many people are actually playing it. Oh, an average of not point two. Uh, over the last Ho thirty days, hopefully, yeah, ho hopefully this <laughs> ends up in like a bundle or something, so people can pick it up for cheap, and we can do this in the after show or something. In the like game's that. defense, yeah. <laughs> when I did log in, there were two people flying around the map. I don't know whether they were bots. Here's the thing: they were either absolute shite players or glue stick munching bots because I just <laughs> nuked them, and I have like eight minutes fly time in the game. <laughs> Like, I was just toying with them. They couldn't figure out, like, oh, I just rotate while I'm shooting at you so I don't give you a static target. Couldn't process that. So, pro tips. Mm. Try try shooting where they're going to be instead of where they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Michael Foxy, he threw something in here, man, in our show notes. You he can do that did. as a Patreon. Yes. Uh, Sky Racket, which uh, seems to be like a, well... Ever since uh, Cuphead came out, there's been a lot of like uh, side scrolly shoot 'em ups uh, with different varying art styles, and this one seems very Steven Universe, -y. and um, it's it looks fine, but at the same time, it also reminds me of uh, Time Umari, and I kind of hated that game, so that it's already not looking very good from where I'm sitting. But yeah, maybe that's just me. And if this is your gem, then. It, 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 it's yeah, a shmup. So that that is that is one hundred percent the Steven Universe font too, man. Rebecca Sugar's yeah. gonna see somebody. <laughs> it's, Very Steven Universe. -y. It's got a demo. Come on, it's got local multiplayer, regular multiplayer, uh, local co-op, no online. Womp womp. Uh, what do we need to run it? Do we need a hot new sexy? Nope, just eighteen oh four LTS. Nope, no, no, yeah. it'll run on an Intel HD graphics. So yeah, <laughs> it requires Vulcan or OpenGL. Huh? Interesting. Nothing like some yep. hipster pixel Vulcan. Yeah, this. If you ever I'm, wondered, he, uh, people like a go, go. dark, sick love child of Mega Man and a schmop, you'd pretty much get this. It doesn't look yeah. <laughs> bad, but I, I'm bullet the hell out, man. I got that for it. I was like, all right, have fun with it. Yeah. I, I was I was just gonna say that like people forget Vulcan can do two D, but it can do it very well. But yes, yes. <laughs> it'll do two D so well you'll you'll hear your graphics card go. Oh God, please put a FPS cap on it. Uh, man, I will tell you that something about Shadow of Hordor, OpenGL or the Vulcan mode in the beta makes the twenty sixty hum. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it goes from like I mean, we're not talking fan noise we're talking what you would call coil and electromagnetic mm -hmm. it goes from like mm, i'm like whoa okay that's loud <laughs> um it's kind of brilliant never winter nights does that for the 1080 as well <laughs> not as brilliant an as the new segment that's coming up next <laughs> all right coming up next we're gonna do some jazz hands <laughs> then we're gonna talk about new amd drivers and with that particular Welcome discussion out of the it. way, Wait. yeah, you should absolutely watch the show live when you get the chance. But hey, the news are coming up, so don't go anywhere. First, though, we do need to, um, well shill ourselves basically we, we, it's not we like do. oh wait ven does have the nvidia shilling going on right now ven do you have that box to hand uh, uh, <laughs> amd send me a check and i'll quit showing off <laughs> nvidia products I, I also have my hot new video card it gets so many frames a second oh shit is that the new xbox <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for, 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 if you if you like this content and want to see more dumb potato jokes, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's a or I guess you could head on over to LinuxGamecast.com first. We got we got a support menu with all various links like to our Patreon or Libra Pay. We got a, we got a store. Tuber wanna, Patreon. Like, Do you think there's a Patreon Tuber for Patreons, tubers? man? <laughs> yeah, it's if if you are a potato, you can support us there. Potato Domo. Indeed. Uh, you, but yeah, like I said, we have a store. You can buy some LGC merch, some mouse pads, some stickers, some t-shirts, some potato accessories, like a like no. game controller. Shut they can up. plug into Just your potato and let play it go, video man. games. <laughs> there will be no, no talks of potato accessories on this fine educational program. 
Fine, I'll just turn it into a battery then. Uh, yeah, we also got uh, wish lists for uh, yeah, we do the for myself, for Pedro, and for Ven's store. If you want to drop for Ven's I don't store, know, for, I'm running Ven's, a store now. Do I got to worry no, about customers? What the hell are you on about? Well, I mean, it, 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 it's an Amazon store technically. If somebody but... shows up at my house tomorrow looking to buy something in the studio. You're responsible. I mean, they're probably going to walk away with shit too. You have a lot of stuff just lying around your oh, house. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> like you, you probably could open up a store period um but yeah um if, if, if you if you want to help us out end up on frank's fuck well you can buy some stuff off our wish list uh, if you want to drop four grand on one of those um help, help frank upgrade his nvidia code um yeah <laughs> Uh, that, oh, by the way, if the audio box overheats, it's because I stacked all these NVIDIA boxes on top of the case. So. It's, it's, the cardboard's a very good insulator. Yeah. But yeah, you can also check out patreon.com slash on this gamecast. You get a bunch of cool stuff like access to our Discord channel, uh, an extra hour of content in the form of the pre pre Live, super shows. If you want to listen to it or a custom RSS feed, man. Yeah, you can even watch it if you yep. want. It's kind of crazy. Um, but you can also get access to the show notes, see the stories as they congeal help shape the the course of the discourse that happens here on this yawn podcast um you can even rsvp to game stream sometimes i play some games with the folks in chat room sometimes ven does pedro doesn't though because he's too good for them well you can join us uh last if you like trivia and games uh, we're going to be sticking to that last friday of every month for the friday night food bar you can join us for jackbox trivia we have six versions of that to get sexy with that's kind of fun Technic technically this past friday was the last friday of the yeah month. but i explained that you you should have watched the Friday stream, you monster. <laughs> no, I was I was too busy. I totally my didn't explain that in the first two minutes. Damn. I don't I don't I don't, I don't have the attention span for that, Ven. You know me. Oh, baby. You should learn it. Uh, one thing I did release, um, a little preview. If you want to get like a little early taste, uh, we don't put anything on our paywall. I mean, it'll eventually everything's like that timed exclusive exclusives, We're pretending more epic. Um <laughs> Kind of a more advanced stuff that we're doing with OBS. I'm going to be start doing something, uh, something, some things with just podcasting in general. I've gotten like three different people from the past two weeks. Like, how do I do this thing? Which means like I need to make a video for everyone to do this. But uh, one of the things we do, uh, like our little circles. See, look at that. Uh, ah, I'm uh, trapped. Yep. <laughs> I made a video on how you do that on Linux with OBS and set that up. You don't have to use circles. You, you can use squares. Or it's just the idea of learning how to do image mask and retaining full shots and crop shots at the same time, which is a bit roundabout with OBS. But yeah, that's there if you want to go check that out. And it'll be up uh, probably by Wednesday for mass general consumption. All right, that's beautiful. Thanks, everybody, for making this possible. Loud, live, independent, and commercial-free. That's kind of awesome, man. Uh, We'll keep on rocking on. Everyone's beautiful. Stick around for your name in the credits. Well, speaking of epic, well, <laughs> turns out, turns out they're doing stuff. Yeah. Dude, old Unreal takes over maintenance of... Old Unreal. Yeah, Unreal Tournament. Yeah. Man. <laughs> uh, dear old Unreal and Unreal Tournament communities, what some of you may have suspected or heard through the grapevine, I have never stuck my ear to a grapevine. Shut up. No. Um, <laughs> Go away, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, they were taking over the maintenance of the Unreal Tournament code base, uh, the, working with a few other members of the old Unreal development team. Uh, they've been working with the new UT patch. Nothing's going to change. Everything's going to remain compatible, network compatible wise. All your mods are going to work. And. Uh, all I got is, you know, they have a QA. and a all this in our show notes. Go check that out after the fact. Um, what's going to be updated? What is going to change? I get done reading this entire thing. And I said, you know what? Why in the cinnamon toast hell do we have to deal with another closed source group maintaining this? It's because, I'm being right? <laughs> more no, unreasonable no. than normal. Epic loves open source, you guys. I mean, it, when when it, when it doesn't cost them anything, it allows them to force responsibility onto others. And I mean, this this is kind of that sort of. It fits within their mo. These guys have effectively volunteered to take over maintenance of a frankly ancient, almost twenty year old twenty code years base old, now. Brad. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it still has an active enough community that that seems like a worthwhile decision. Um, and I mean, like, it's not a bad decision nonetheless, right? The people who are actually still keeping the game alive are going to be the ones maintaining the code base, which <laughs> either means it's going to go to complete shit or will just continue to pit along as it normally does. 
But can you imagine like how much further along this game would be? You, uh, Pedro, were you the one who brought it up? Yeah, Quake, Quake Three. Think about stuff yeah. like that. How much more? How how much longer it's going to live in the engine? The updates that it's received. We have firsthand experience with getting the original Unreal Tournament um, up and running yeah. for multiplayer <laughs> on Linux. That's a shit show, and that yeah. wouldn't be the case, right? Yeah, and how in the world where, you know, all the relevant quakes are now open source, does Epic justify holding on to the sauce for this long? Because, yeah, this is the old 1999 version of Unreal we're talking about. What the hell? And I then again, Tim listen here, you communist. Um, then again, I can sort of kind of see the why, because if Bethesda had bought id... Um, long ago before they ever made the quakes open sauce the, the sauce would still be closed on those games right now too no, because no, no man we're, we're, we're getting we're getting id tech 7 open source it's gonna happen man uh -huh. i believe <laughs> that that idea died with when carmack peaced out man when, that yeah. idea died with carmack he's not <laughs> dead he's dead to me he's on a rocket <laughs> rocket mac <laughs> all right is this well, all working for facebook <laughs> No, Jazz uh, Max. Uh, jazz, yeah, Jazz Jack's Rabbit. Jack Rabbit. Yeah, Jizz, sure. Not, uh, Zach, j yeah. It's Jizz music from Star Wars. Uh, not 6 1 is out. It's available. Uh, they're rebased on uh, .NET Core 3.0. Oh, they finally. Added gamepad. Yeah, they added gamepad support because, I mean, it's an open source <laughs> game, but here, here's the jam. They're not using SDL because it's just using mono. You, The Linux build yep. instructions are you run mono and then the EXE. And then you can play Jazz Jacket Rabbit, which you know, it I, they added multiplayer. I don't know if the original Jazz Jack Rabbit. Had I don't know that he, okay, yeah, Jazz that Jack what, Rabbit Two had multiplayer. Is that what happens when you get mono? Probably. I, you, 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 <laughs> end, you end up playing a lot of Jazz Jack Rabbit with your friends. Sure, Possibly. instead of, instead know, of kissing them. Listen, I'm just trying I, to report the facts, man. Listen, you, you got to spend more time making out with your friends. Then they'll have mono. Yeah. And, and <laughs> no one wants mono bukkake. <laughs> mono kaki. Then it's Prin no longer princess, mono. Princess mono kaki. What's the plural of mono? Duo. Dukaki. Multi. <laughs> half disease, half motorcycle. <laughs> but shut, uh, shut up, yeah, vision. I, actually, <laughs> I did try to build the uh, version not six one of uh, Jazz two on um, on Solus, and it's not having any of it for some reason. I have all the dependencies, but it just throws an error uh, when it's actually doing the build. But the release, uh, if you go to the releases page, you can actually download it there, and it works. That one actually works. Uh, so, yeah. Can't you just play this in WebAssembly? You should probably it's could. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you know. It's a really old game, you guys. <laughs> yeah, th this is like mid-1990s here. <laughs> yeah, I was just reading off the page that says you could. But, hey, what do I know? Um, I, probably. I mean, it, it's it kind is of a thing, man. If you like mono. that, Pedro, you played it. And a couple things were not working when you played it. And... I I tried I, I tried to be there for you, fam, and I lasted like eight minutes. It's like I don't care so hard. I'm going to like pull something and just seem to enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I very much like Jazz Jack Rabbit uh, two back in the day, and getting that to work on Linux, it was really nice. I did a stream of it, like Ben said, but. This new version actually fixes a lot of the issues. The birds that are in the cage that you can free and then they help you for a little while. Those actually work now, and the game actually remembers the controls. Uh, if you change the controls, the game actually remembers that now, too. Yeah, they basically, they've done um, quite a few updates since uh, my stream a couple of months ago. So, yeah, it, it's it's improving. That's that's all I'm asking for, and they're delivering. <laughs> no, no, North Ranger, you don't want to convert your game to, op to web jill. It'll just be giggling at you nonstop. Hey, man, it might be... Free of glitching graphical horror. It could be, much like uh, Shadow of Horror. And uh, that comes uh, from the Mesa 19.2.2 release notes. And um, yeah, uh, that Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor uh, had some issues with Rad V, and it was very obvious to see because Feral released the, um, the update, what was it, last week? And the um 
if you had an RX 570 like myself or really any of the Red V compliant graphics cards, there were some issues, especially in the sky with the lighting. There were a lot of visual glitches. And with this new version and uh, the 19.3 development versions of Mesa, those issues have now been fixed. And they also uh, fixed the corruption when starting rocket cars, which was something I used to see a lot uh, in the Steam box. I'd start it up and it would go like purple and I'd see whatever was um, in RAM from previous games that I'd played uh, when I'd turn it on. It's like, oh, how nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do, I do like in this that. notes, in the, in, the, in the patch notes here, that much like The Hobbit, they apparently split this Hodor fix into multiple parts. That <laughs> seems to be a little unnecessary, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Doom works again. Uh, there, was some, there were some crashes on the 2016 version of Doom on uh, Mesa 19.2. That was a regression. So uh, nice uh, Mesa 19.2.2 will fix that. You can play Moot again on your... Uh, on, on your RX 580, if you're so inclined, if you're like I wouldn't know because I only use NVIDIA products. Uh huh. <laughs> up next, <laughs> how's that processor hanging out for you? Shut up. <laughs> My NVIDIA CPUs. <laughs> oh man, Vulcan planes traveling to Vulcan. Limited research shares new information regarding the Vulcan upgrade. That's right, the developers of X Plane, you know them, you love them, um, are playing around with integrating Vulcan into the game itself. And here's the thing. They're like, yo, we were using this thing called OpenGL. You know, you might have heard of it. Then, like this new hotness that's been around for several years called Vulcan. We heard the kids were playing with it, so we wanted to try it. Turns out, ZoMG, WTF, BBQ, it's faster than OpenGL. And we are shocked about this. Um, I am positively in awe. To which I'll reply, that's kind of the fucking point, Brad, of Vulcan. <laughs> um <laughs> This, uh, I'm glad you're playing with it. I mean, they, they definitely saw a, you know, it's like a 15 to 20 for bump over open jail. You know, I understand you know, a lot of boilerplates you got to do to get everything moved over. But that that's the promise of Vulcan. And I know we probably spent the first two years of everyone going, brah, DX12 future, brah, DX12. To oh, which stick I, around for the the head mail. There's going to be some of that. Yeah, I'm like sitting back and I was like, yeah, right once, uh, It'll work on the Xbox, the Windows phone. Oh, wait, now it just works on the Xbox. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's yeah. not. Vulcan's the future. And I'm glad to see more open source projects going to it because that's where it needs mm -hmm. to be, right, Jordan? And Indeed. I mean, like, and if you go through the article here, Laminar's research seems to indicate that, you know, Vulcan helps to bridge the performance gap between AMD and NVIDIA, which to anyone who's been watching uh, the show will give out a resounding <laughs> duh um yeah as, as, as it as it turns out uh the amd open gl implementation kind of sucked for a long long time and having everyone kind of start from the same ground up and have to rebuild their shit for vulcan means that there's more room for performance parity which is nice um i'm sure dick thomas is super excited about this and they're saying <laughs> that it's coming to a release spoon so whenever that is We'll, co we'll cover yeah. it. Stay tuned. Do, do you think it's going to be kind of a mixed bag, though? Because I'm sure some people have dedicated x -Plane machines. Oh, yeah. With, like, like, probably like, have like, like a mock-up cockpit or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. guess what? <laughs> Old. Not yeah. Vulcan compatible. <laughs> but it, it's... It's good that game developers are actually starting to become aware of what we and a bunch of other people on the internet have been saying. Pedro, I think they're more than aware. Years now. There's just a hard line in the sand with the uh, reasoning being, I don't want to. Video cards are expensive. Like, sure. Say, I don't want to. I'd actually respect if a game developer came out and said, we don't want to do this. Okay. Fine, I, but they never do. <laughs> you'll get any more than my Vulcan buttons? Um, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a visual Vulcan is what a lot of people are waiting on, man. Well, spe speaking of Vulcan visuals, uh, there's a new project yes. that's available on GitHub. Oh, shit. Maybe you'd like uh, to see some of that uh, sharpening filters that uh, NVIDIA and AMD no. are doing Go on pay Windows. Extra for those. Yeah, you need to pay the Windows license for those, but Someone has actually decided, you know what, we can do that on Linux. We can actually do that on Linux without a whole lot of anything. And they just put up a couple of shaders and the uh, appropriate make file to get it all 
sorted and basically you can have a VK basalt, which is what they called it, uh, on Linux and it does a very good job of actually sharpening. I included a couple of uh, pictures from um, Fallout 4. And Everyone you, prepare the, yourself. You're about to undergo yeah. the sharpening. What we're looking at now is a clapped out truck, which is mm -hmm. regular mode, correct? Yep. Now we're going to rub Vulcan sauce on it and boop now it, it looks like a truck it's sharper <laughs> it's if you actually look at the tree and the uh, grass uh, to next to the truck or even like the rust textures on the truck you can actually see that it is much sharper and that was a screenshot that's just like the center oh, of the screen oh, oh, of oh, a uh, 3840 by 2160 screenshot of fallout 4 I, so, I, go ahead, Jordan. I, 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 got, I got one for you, though. This, th this comparison doesn't look like it's going to be selling me some massage chairs. That's no sharper image. <laughs> I'm going to say the alternate theory between looking at the A and B pictures. I, I could definitely walk by and go, it looks like somebody cut off anti-lacing. <laughs> no, that's with... Uh, I'm just saying Forex. visually, if I were shown those two pictures, it's like, what's the difference? It was like, one of them's anti-lace, the other one isn't. Now here, here yeah, here's no, the, the, yeah. both have 4x. I AA. know, but I'm saying visually <laughs> without the background. I'm just saying that's this perceptual issue there, right there. If you showed that to yeah. anyone without explaining, and you're like, yeah, one, one, they, they would say the blurry one looks better. So here, 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 here's a question though: in like games with uh, anti cheater stuff like that, post -pro uh, adding a pros post processing layer is not going to get your ass banned for like wall hacking, right? What are your thoughts on pre pros pre post processing? pre-post processing yeah, yeah. that's the thing you are running that through vk basalt so if you have nah, something dude, that's checking for cheating it's a dongle if you are yeah if you are running something like say it's running easy anti-cheat it might go yeah you're running that through a third-party program we don't know what it does so we're just gonna ban you yeah use at your own risk yeah then go find that's some why bugs I, yeah, that's why I yeah. picked the single player game for that one. <laughs> Caveat mTOR. All right, well, this is Rogue Box Adventures, which I had never heard of until this week. But they got a new beta out after about two years of nothing. Uh, they back. Um, they updated the rendering engine. Uh, there's an optional main plot now if for whatever is you need a story with your roguelike. Um, and yeah, they, they've added a couple other things as well. Some items, some additions. They've reworked a couple of the, the dungeons. How come so it's always weebs getting stuck in dungeons? I think there's a big <laughs> overlap between weebs and game developers. Mm. Fair. So it, it's it, 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 it's unavoidable. Like that, that Venn diagram is basically just a circle. So... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, oh, I get it because we're in circles right now. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. Stab <laughs> both of you in the dicks. It's so it's so intentional, you guys. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, it, it's it's sort of like a it's sort of like a Minecraft thing where you walk around, you build stuff, you can build towns, will spawn vi villagers. So it it has that aspect there. So maybe if you're into like Dwarf Fortress, this will be for you. It's done in Python, uh, and it's completely free. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm kind of like you. I've never heard of it. But then again, in all fairness, they're like, yeah, it's been two years. I'm like, okay, that's probably why. Not exactly the most active of development, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's free. It's a roguelite. So nothing personal against the game. It's just the genre. And that, I uh, know, no, not my thing. Pedro, I'm surprised you're not playing it right now. Uh, honestly, much like you, I'd never heard of this game before, and yeah, I might actually try it now, but yeah, I see a bunch of anime characters and reading through the posts, apparently none of them gets a proper dicking, so to speak, so oh, no, that, what the that, hell? That's coming, that's coming in the V4 bit. What do you don't, insist don't worry. on trying to interject <laughs> Richard Nixon in every damn game? This is becoming a serious it's, issue with it, you. It's, re it's really tricky. It's really tricky. It's hard to bust a... All right, whatever. Let's hard get to bust all a right. Spiro Agnew. Tap I don't out. know where I'm going with that. Frost versus whatever. Coming up next, we throw chairs at Runefall 2. Can can, can we Rune count to Vol. three? It's like Runefall, but with more yes. Vol. <laughs> Vol. It's like Rune, Rune Volleyball. Vol. I am the Kwisatz Chirderact, and I'm here to declare that it's time for the Chairquisition, where the accused must stand trial in front of Fedora. We, we don't Solos have the quad laser, we have the quad chairs.
Yeah. <laughs> and only then can we ask, is it fun? This week we're taking a look at Runefall 2 by Play Academy. Done in Unity. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What is it? Return to the Kingdom of Silverdale. Never was there to begin with. And continue the story of Rivermore and his in this brand new Match 3 adventure. Uh, we got some keys over Curator Connect, so we got to thank Play Academy for that. So let us begin as we discuss how broken this game is, Ven, right, right. on Debian. Man, we had to give it the spin over here on Debian 10.1. Running da -da, da -da, a Red Ripper, 1920x, 32 gigajoules of RAM, and a 2060 because we need to... Why is this on that? I don't know, man. I figured out what was wrong, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening, don't go back and watch that. It's terrifying. Um, this graphical juggernaut really uh, taxed my 20s. Not really. Um check it out i mean it runs it's unity right pedro it, it smells like unity yep all right it, it is, is unity <laughs> um it's locked it sinks so you're gonna get 60 at 60 i'm guessing at 1080 there's not much in the way the options there but i can't fault it because it does go into its own version of a window which is slightly smaller than 3840 by 2160 or it goes full screen <laughs> Graphics, I mean, I didn't see any glitches and you're looking at it. I mean, it looks like a nice little mobile game. Controls, if you can click, you can play, man. So we're just going to say for the technical part, the QA, as it will, of the chair acquisition, um, I can fault it. I can give it a clean bill of health with four chairs. All right. Well, on Fedora 30, 64 bit with the i7 6700K GTX 1080i. Yeah, it it launches when you click on it, and Ooh. performance. Yeah, performance wise, I mean, match three games really require like the highest frames per second to you know enable you to match three as quickly as possible, baby. right? Yeah, <laughs> free sync. Um, yeah, graph graphical wise, yeah, the shapes that you're supposed to match are very clearly shapes. So good on you for that game and controls. As was mentioned, you click on things. So I will give it four chairs. Yeah, and over here in Solus Land with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it, it launches just fine. It With the new uh, 144 hertz monitor, it was locked at 144 uh, FPS, so that that's working. Uh, if this were a hidden object game, I'd say the graphics uh, were done by Artifacts Monday, but it's not. It really not, does look and... like that, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it's that one person, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, I, probably. I, I, but, but, but again, it's, it's one of those things where I genuinely don't know if I would have come to that conclusion already or if I read your chairquisition, I'm like, yeah, it kind of does. So yeah, no, and, I I saw the 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 graphics. It's like, did Artifacts Moon the DDR for the? No, 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 it's all them. Uh, all right, cool, but yeah, uh, the graphics they look like that basically. Uh, <laughs> and control, yeah, you click, you drag, you rinse, and you repeat. Uh, I have been amazed if they'd found a way to screw that up, but they didn't. So four chairs. <laughs> all right, well there you go. It works. Was it fun though? I, uh, I already I already see the natives They're like what's going on what's this what? what you know what you're right full disclosure I initially threw this in because hey man it'd be kind of fun just to rip apart a match three game it's like ah okay let's have some fun with it and you know just, just talk some smack well ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I was wrong I was Runefall two it's a bit more than a match three game since your matchmaking. It's merely the mechanic for traversing the map. You have to explore that. I mean, it's never growing, ever increasing in size, this map. And you get to dig up power-ups, uh, pickaxes, muffins. It's got a muffin button, bombs, and the ultimate life hack, as you will have to learn as part of your strategy, the ability to teleport to additional parts of the map. Especially if you introduce Mr. Timer Pants, which that's what I was like, oh shit, this has got interesting. And again, I sat down to tell this game to go fuck itself, which I couldn't after about 30 minutes. Because once you cut that timer on, shit got real with that quickness. And apparently there's something about being forced to do pattern recognition on a timer that made my brain beats extremely positively giddy. Runefall 2? It also contains a plot with a fully voiced cast, but only in so much as like a porno has a script. It's there, but we, we both know, you know, what we showed up for. And 
yeah, I kind of dig it because at the end of the day, take that shot. It feels like low impact brain exercise. And let's face it, most of us, we don't get enough of that, man. I wanted to talk shit about this. It's like, this is a well-designed puzzle game. If you get over the initial thing of like, this is a stupid clicker patch three game. It was like, no, no, no. That That's the part that's going to fuck with you while you try to play the game proper it is a very stealth something i don't i don't know if i've ever really encountered something like this so good on you lot for 10 spot uh man i i fucked around and put two hours into it for a game that i initially just was like this is why these games are dumb and no one likes them and they're a menace on steam and it pox upon game no i'll give it three chairs man i genuinely put three hour i think like at the two hour mark though my brain's like sawed off play something a little less involving yeah i mean i don't need oodles of story for a match three game so i skipped all of the dialogue i i just don't care to its credit it has a button it's like yeah do you do you not give a shit cool (laughs) it's right it's right in the front and center too it's like you we understand if you don't care and you just want to get to the clickies um, but yeah, the game itself is pretty decent. You match your way around the map, you find the stuff, and use the power-ups. Um, and I, th- I think, I think um, this this game really illustrates how um, Playcade has a really good understanding of how sort of their game mechanism informs the actual gameplay itself. Um, because yeah, like Ven said, matching stuff is basically your way to traverse the map and you know do the things because you'll have to clear patches of grass or gain specific patterns of stuff to like. Build Bombs, up sequences and get build extra money. Bridges. Yeah, yeah, like it's 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 a it's a whole thing. Uh, so it, it's a good way to it's a good way to break up the monotony that a lot of these games tend to introduce by you know not making it the main focus of the game by but by making it the vehicle in which you interact with the game itself. Um, my autistic ass gets hung up on trying to get the right pieces down in like those little fucked up corner areas so that I can clear that one <laughs> patch of grass that is missing. And that's why I did not turn on a timer because that would make this game not fun for me. Oh, um, man. But I mean, the, really, the only difference is you get like six extra gold pieces or whatever if you do the timer. Um, well, I think with the uh, timer disabled, you know, you can just bullshit your way through it if you're patient enough exactly and i mean like i'm sitting here i'm sitting here on drugs and i'm just like i'm having a good time just matching three and like doing the thing because again it's it's the vehicle it it gives me a goal matching three matching a bunch of three things will get me this thing at the end and that that's enough to get me invested um so yeah very 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 solid game design for a fucking cookie clicker i'm surprised that uh, they are able to refine the formula in such a way. Uh, I'll give it two chairs, because, like, you know, it's fun enough for what it is. I just don't think I'm rushing back anytime soon to play it. But it's all right. <laughs> if you like this if you like this sort of game, you'll probably really like Runefall. Okay. And uh, for me, yeah, I didn't enable the timer either, because it's a match three game. I like to take my time and actually go through the things. That level you're watching right now... Do you try to, do you try right to build now, the combos? Uh, I try to build the combos, and I like to just see and explore every teeny tiny little bit of the map and much like you get rid of that last patch of dirt uh so yeah that level uh that i recorded it took me over 30 minutes to actually get through because oh, you see, see, this i was is just bullshit dude 15 15 minutes on the timer <laughs> this, this this puts you to work this puts you to task yeah but i i i very much enjoyed it and it, it is a match three game and emphasis here very much goes to the game. Most match three sort of games uh, tend to do something completely separate to the matching, and the matching itself is only used as filler to give the player something to do. In Runefall 2, matching is the game, and outside of the cutscenes, like Jordan already mentioned, I too very much just skipped those entirely and just went straight for the matching. I don't care about the story. Uh, It's some dashing rogue that seduced a princess and stole some runes. Now you have to match three until you find all the runes. That's cool. Let me match more uh, tiles and I'll be very happy. It is a very run-of-the-mill story and I guess it is uh, meant to be kit-friendly. So I can sort of see why they did it, but I do very much enjoy the extra mechanics that they threw in. Like, you move around the map as you match... uh, stuff in different places the camera pans to uh focus on that area that's very nice um you have entirely hidden areas that you can only get to by actually using the jump mechanic how many times did you try to like middle click drag that fucking mouse 
a map. A, a few. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The, the camera, yeah. It, it moves only when you match. But yeah, I I tried to like move the camera. It's like, no, let me go up there. No, can't do that. But that that's becomes actually part a mechanic. Of strategy when you have to yeah. get over here to unlock this room, then you got to get, that's when you got to start using, again, it, it's a match three, but like it's, it's, said, it's a it, gameplay mechanism. The game yeah. design is like it's. They what? made a game out of a whole match three concept, and that's amazing. It, and they one of the like the things that they actually do differently than most um, mobile games is the uh, power ups. Because in mobile games, power ups are usually tied to microtransactions, and you're heavily discouraged from using them. But in this one, it, they just refill as you're doing some matching. So you're heavily encouraged to keep using them and the and mechanics then some of the are... items fill meters matched quicker than the others yep. i mean yeah the like... jump meter is through the shields like the actual power-ups on the left are through the potions yeah th these are all very good mechanics and they're all very simple and very easy to understand and it makes the game very enjoyable because it gives you something to do <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> so there you go. Runefall 2, a pretty okay way to spend some time. Surprise. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> for me, this. We, if you can't tell, we're all kind of taken aback by, like. Right. I, I totally <laughs> wrote this game off to begin with. I'm like, really? A fucking match three game? Okay, I'm going to spend like an hour playing it. And I looked at the clock. I'm like, man, two hours have passed. What the fuck am I doing? Oh, right. I'm on drugs. I genuinely <laughs> walked into this as, like, because they. If you take the time to send us three copies of something, I at least give it a pity fuck. You know, like, okay, let, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And it's like, oh, and, 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 like 30, 40 minutes later, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? When, okay. Touche. You actually created an engaging <laughs> clicky game. It's no cookie <laughs> clicker, which I don't think is native. I think you could use Proton to pay the, play that masterpiece. But. <laughs> Isn't it a browser game? Was, yeah, it's, the whole point was like you could write Java, inline JavaScript to fuck with the yeah, game. Yeah, but, but I play it in IE6 with wine. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Coming up next, we discuss why IE6 is the future of browsers and gaming, according to this one guy on YouTube who doesn't really understand how an ellipsis work. Would you look at that? A uh, show that didn't take an hour and a half for you to get through. That's that's. I different. don't know, dude. When we read this, <laughs> we, we might be able to round it out. It goes yeah, until the we end might of be time. able to bullshit <laughs> bullshit our way through another thirty or so minutes. But let's not do that. Instead, let us know whether you prefer longer or shorter shows by going to LinuxGameCast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. Make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your hate mail to, and we'll be happy to. Uh, Feature your thing right here, right now. And if you're a game developer and you'd like us to have a look at your games, do like to find folks that play Ketami did this week and uh, send us three keys. Minimum. Please. Come on. <laughs> it's so, not so, that hard. <laughs> wait, no. You, you could understand, man. Um, I'm special, so I'm going to send you one. <laughs> uh -huh. And it'll never get redeemed and because no one will even... The developer I of... Um, what was it called? Uh, it, it, they were also the developer of... Uh, Botanicula and Samrus. Uh, and they have a new game out, and I sent them an email. It's like, yo, if you want to send us some keys through Cure and Connect, you can. And they sent us one. God did, damn you. Wait, did you so redeem they're, they're, it? No. No. So, ooh, oh, you, you know you know what we should do? We should only give them one third of a review. <laughs> oh, welcome to the. <laughs> Just, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> just, just cut out. Just, do, do record the entire thing, but it just cuts off a third of the way through. It's like a third so, 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 soprano style. Yeah. <laughs> Let's jump right into this from uh, one of our executive producers, Aldius. Writes us. Yes, he said. He did, and um, uh, I uh, prob uh, very late fight. to the party. <laughs> but know, this is care. very bad for all non GPL code. Long story short, how long until this, if ever, happens to the NVIDIA driver? And he, of course, he's talking about the ZFS implementation on the kernel. No, nope, never heard of it. Tell me about it. So, uh, Greg Crow Hartmann and uh, who else was it? Uh, Sebastian Andres. Uh, well, they were kind of like having a bit of a back and forth in the uh, kernel mailing list. And part of it was because ZFS was using out-of-tree modules. And 
part of the implementation of ZFS requires it to use a different uh, crypto system than what, say, BTRFS uses. Uh, BTRFS actually uses uh, CRC32C, which is built into the kernel, and ZFS could, in theory, use all of that. But if you remember from a while back, um, ZFS isn't exactly, or its implementation isn't exactly GPL compliant. And that's kind of an issue. And the, uh, the, like the whole thread basically ends with uh, Greg Crow Hartman saying, yes, the GPL condom uh, attempt doesn't work at all. It's been shot, uh, shot down a long time ago in the courts. And so, yeah, it's honestly, this doesn't affect the NVIDIA driver at all because the NVIDIA driver was never, uh, never um, uh, GPL compliant to start with. It, it It's proprietary all the way, so. Indeed, and yeah. even, even then, the shim just passes <laughs> stuff off to the actual library that yep. is, contains all of the uh, non-GPL code anyways. Because you know file systems and video drivers are very different, and also I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Nvidia wants to continue selling their GPUs to super, people running supercomputers, and those don't run Windows. Yeah, this is, this is also true. Um, even I don't know. I, I was trying to think about this the other day because Nvidia was a company, but before that, even in parallel. I bought 3DFX cards because 3DFX cards, you could just go to their web zone, download the RPMs, and run them on Red Hat. There, it was no fuss whatsoever. I mean, setting up the video driver is easy. Change it to 3DFX and the X3D6 config back in the day. Then when that, NVIDIA... that, that, that part wasn't easy, but, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, get off my lawn. It wasn't too bad. Um, this was after you enabled your scroll wheel in X3D6 config. Mm -hmm. um, the, when NVIDIA nommed them up, I was like, well, my next purchasing option is like, well, where do I go to? Do I do like S3 or Matrox? And NVIDIA is like, yeah, we just got Linux drivers. Just download them. And this is like 2000, whatever, like early. I was like, okay. And that's kind of why I've stuck with NVIDIA, not because uh, they're, you know, hi, you know, <laughs> F you the stack. Right. <laughs> the. Well, uh, honestly, I was pointing to our boy Torvalds back here. He's like, hi, NVIDIA. I love you. Um, <laughs> Peace among worlds, bitches. Right? <laughs> he loves Microsoft, though. And Mono, man, left channel only. The, it just works. But um, I've completely lost my train of thought on that, man. Good. Winning. NVIDIA, GPL compliance. Yeah, yeah no, it, it, not going to happen they, anytime they, soon. So it, it'll work just the same in the future as it does now. I don't know. What if it stops working next Tuesday? Uh, then you ring up NVIDIA and ask what the hell, yo. <laughs> then, then, then I bring that computer out there in here and... <laughs> I just use El Cheapo as the main yeah. rig. <laughs> well, uh, so, like, one, 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 one interesting thing, though, like, just regarding approach that, like, NVIDIA and AMD use is that, like, with AMD, the video card, their driver code is completely separate from the one they have on under uh, Windows. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. in with the NVIDIA code, it's a lot of the shared code base. It's just, um, it's just the um, like the specific libraries in the kernel shim, the way you actually interface with the driver. So the thing, the thing that's interacting with the hardware is more or less the same under Linux and Windows. So where I was getting to is like I, I have always enjoyed setting up my NVIDIA drivers on Fedora because Fedora goes out of its way to tell you that closed source drivers are bad and you should feel bad and this taints the kernel and what are you doing you moron yeah we won't take your um bug reports anymore if you have a tainted kernel well then goodbye uh abrt <laughs> peace <Grr>. all right <laughs> so what you've been waiting for is something that professor nash himself <laughs> might have trouble decoding and you know what this could have been the actual message that drove him insane Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll take a crack at this. <laughs> pray, pray for me. Pray for Mojo. DXVA is compiler idea that I brought an idea for Linux users long ago, and I did say it would fix the wine problem back since version one point three wine. But that was that t that time was just one my possibility. What Sony used similar for PS three console. No, and ladies and gentlemen, sure. Jordan is not suffering from a stroke. He is reading yeah. verbatim. No, no, that that's how it is. Yeah, <laughs> and did show why Xbox three sixty performed better. 
cause native libraries are cling to native drivers under Windows system <laughs> than Linux do not. And layer <laughs> is what thought of for them. Another layer for Mesa libraries that we got Wayland introduced and VertGL for QEMU and other virtual machines that utilize OpenGL as experiment. That experiment was the foundation of what developers continue. What I left off, reason I quit on this project. It's games and will perform <laughs> worst on DX 12.1 due to changes. Microsoft added to library that now utilizes user version utilize newer version C++ 2019 that will not be possible for any Vulkan library due to complex instructions is <laughs> <Okay>. used. <laughs> we, we, get, we get the point. Now, is it this gets just... a little extra crazy after this. Oh, too, okay, so. okay. Yeah, yeah right. it does. Pedro, take a crack at that last bit. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to read it uh, verbatim, but basically, yeah, he starts off by saying that the XVK was his idea and he started working on it and then he quit uh, because he realized that DX12 uh, was the future bra and according to him um, version C++ uh, 2019 uh, is something that Vulcan can never do and the whole idea behind Proton and DXVK is never going to be able to use 100% of the hardware uh, so by the Are time he sure actually says that yeah. <laughs> are you are you are you actually cuz you could just be making stuff up and I'd have to believe you cuz I can tell it. <laughs> oh no, I'm assuming I'm that my head this this, point. I'm like, yeah. this uh was run by a translator and this is what came out in English. That's the only excuse I, I have. I refuse to feed this to a <laughs> bullshitter on 9000 because that thing would it, it would just start smoking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, basically, he says at one point that uh, it takes a 20 FPS chunk to run uh, any kind of conversion through uh, something like DXVK, which, you know, with all the news coming out at this point uh, about games actually running faster in DXVK than they do in Windows, you gotta ask yourself, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> well, cl and, cl clearly uh, the inventor of DXVK would know better, right? Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm genuinely asking because again, I don't know what this thing is saying at all. I'm just and taking at the your word end. It's like okay, so uh, he's going at like the 16 milliseconds that it takes for an average um, 60 hertz monitor to display a frame on screen. Yeah, it would take 16 milliseconds, but on DXVK, it's 29 milliseconds. It's like, how the fuck did you get that? Where did that come from? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know where your translation came from, <laughs> this, Pedro. This so. <laughs> my, my feeling is this is one of two things. Straight up fuck mothering good old fashioned insanity, which I'm here to try enough. Or a higher interdimensional being trying to communicate yeah, advanced but... thoughts to us simple tailless monkeys the best yeah, they know that. how. This dude is legit living in the future and trying to communicate. Right? I don't know what the hell a DX 12.1 is, but he fucking dude, does. All right, so. th this is like, what are you trying to say, oh, powerful being? Or what are you trying to say, Lassie? I'm, <laughs> I'm 50 50, man. I'm 50. I don't 50. get it. I, I really do not. I think my nose is bleeding. A little bit, a little bit, Kelly. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know. You got the fuck mothering Rosetta Stone for this nightmare fuel. Um, Dan send Daniel us Jackson, call us, please. Send it to <laughs> us, man. Leave a comment on the YouTubes, on the Patreons. Better yet, use our contact form so we actually get the fucking email. Because for the 375th time, we're going to cue that music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. If you're a patron, hop in Discord audio only. we got a live video feed just for you an extra hour early for our production meeting. You want to get in touch with me? Just add Vin Stone on the Twitters. That's where I'm at. Or just Vin on mast.linuxgamecast.com. I am Microsoft DXVK internet message, the burning fool. Oh no, no. <laughs> he's been infected. <laughs> Quick, reboot, reboot. <laughs> or, 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 or I'm 20% translation layer cost tax, Frojo, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Yes, I am Peter Mathews. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter and that's pretty much it. I'm also on Mastodon, but I don't really... Purple Monkey Dishwasher. <laughs> I need scissors 61!
<laughs> we can't top that email. Normally we try to be clever at the end, but fuck. Seriously, right, check the credits, show notes right? after this, because yeah, that's going to be a read. I, man. <laughs> See, I, I, I was struggling to like figure out how to naturally say what he just put down on the uh. we, we, The <laughs> rock cannot smell what that dude was cooking. I wonder, oh, no, I wonder it, if you... When Ven, when Ven put that in the notes, it took me like three or four reads <laughs> before I could figure out, it's like, oh, oh, that's what you're saying. All right, If, okay. if you, if you, you punch that email and... Our producers, <laughs> Art Theory, Foxy, Empty, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbara, and Aldius, who sent in some hate mail, Haplo, Mac Geek, Scott, and Drummer7. Look at those horses, Whoop. the Nay. producers. <laughs> Jupiter Broadcasting, Dementor, Renaud, Litris, Caxus, Martin, Trud, Lone, Paul, David Linux P, New, Nick, the other Joe Jordan, Angel, Yabo, Stonefish, Nubbins, Zoe, Massimoni, Wintercell, Mike Nibbles, Lind, w, Mr. Mike Amish, w, Sorceress, um, J-Girl, Kai, Linux, <laughs> Kasten, Aldeus, of course, Dirty D, <laughs> Bell Frank, get, get, out, get out of here and flash your shit around. <laughs> nope. Come on. You gotta, you gotta show, you gotta show <laughs> off your... You, you, have one, you have one job, Frank. You have you, one job. Frank. You, you, okay, fine. <laughs> ah, you go back to your room, Frank. You're grounded with no dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that back sass, Frank. <laughs> I'll like beat the cat. you into next week. He's the cat in the meme. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. disapproving Frank is best Frank. Okay. Wait, are the credits going in? Come on. There they go. Eventually. <laughs> Somebody's been playing around with planar tracking. Raw. It's so orange. <laughs> oh my god. Orange, you glad to meet pumpkin banana. Happy and holidays. And it's off-center too. Oh fuck yeah, it is, dude. That was like I wonder if this button works, man. Okay. Did, did you cock it like very slightly on an angle too, just to piss people off? <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you've like watched anything that we do on full screen, there's so many like intentional little just pixel shit. We love you, by the way. Uh, we'll see you next week, Dynify. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the X12 is the future. Five dudes.